Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Today we're going to look at a distro that I've never looked at before. I've been aware of it, but always on the peripherals. I don't know why, uh, because it's a little gem. It's called Salient OS and it's an Arch-based distro that is targeted uh, for gaming and multimedia enthusiasts. So, least I can do is give it a quick look. I'll see you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So Salient OS, it's an Arch-based distro. It's an easy install Arch-based distro. It's uh, developed by a guy called Silent Robot, who's the same Silent Robot that I've mentioned before, uh, alongside uh, Ben Fitzpatrick when we looked at Storm OS, which I believe is the distro that they, they developed in partnership. But Salient OS is Silent Robot's own distro. And it's a UK distro, so... For that reason alone, I'm surprised I haven't looked at it before. And I don't really know why. Because I have been aware of it, but for some reason it's not come to the fore. And that seems to really describe Salient. It's only just hit Distro Watch, even though it's been around for years as far as I know. There's been regular releases all the way along, and yet you don't hear a great deal about it. But when you do hear something about it, it always seems to be good. And the video really that switched me on to this was, uh, it, it was probably a few months ago. It was a video uh, that was being done by English Bob, and he's a gamer. And he made some comments about how Salient is brilliant for gamers and why aren't more people showcasing this distro? And I remember checking it off and thinking, yeah, you know, I must do that. I really must. I'm no good for demonstrating gaming, but I can look at it as a Linux distro. So um, I did just that. Now, first, the caveat. This, this is a first look. You've all seen Arch before. You've all seen XFC and uh, Plasma, and they're the two desktops that this can be downloaded with. Um, you've all seen a Calamaris install. So I'm not going to focus on those things, you know, in great depth. I'm going to do a brief, quick look with a view to perhaps doing an in-depth look in the future. What, what I'm actually thinking about is that I'm going to install this on one of my laptops and uh, live with it for a month or two on the laptop and see what I actually think. Because I'm always... Uh, encouraged to give UK-based distros a, a good go. And this looks like it could be a little gem. So before we get any further, let's go over and have a quick look at uh, the distribution's web page. Well, the official web, web page is salientos.github.io. And uh, nothing to see here would largely seem to say what this is. It's just a launch pad, really. And if you click on the button, it will actually take you to the SourceForge page where Salient OS is hosted. Not a huge amount to say here. It simply says it's a rolling release-based distro, very much aimed at multimedia and gaming enthusiasts. It comes pre-configured with applications out of the box to help you get started quickly. Um... There is an installer there. It's the Calamaris installer. And I'm assuming for gamers that this is going to be the big thing. Uh, for those utilizing eSync or DXVK, Lutris, Steam, Proton, the system and security limits have been configured accordingly to give the best performance out of the box, saving you all of those additional steps. Um, now, I, I'm... I've never configured any of these things. And I'm going to have to leave that to you, the gamers, to kind of perhaps give me some feedback about what you actually think. But from uh, the, the reviews that I've watched on YouTube, 
it would seem that it's pretty easy to get this up and running as far as a gaming system. It comes with, well, you can choose between an XFCE and a Plasma version. And uh, yeah, I've chosen this time the XFCE version. And if we have a look at the files here, you can see that it looks to be pretty active. You know, July 20, January 21, another one in January 21, February 21, another one in February 21, March 21. And this is the one that I've installed, the KD, sorry, the XFCE version that was released only on the 6th of May. So, as he says, there are a few minor changes and bits and pieces sorted out, but it's clearly um, it's clearly being actively developed. And what does he say? To install removed audio or application plug plugins, you can actually install some of those now in Calamaris, and he lists them there. So, okay, let's have a look. Enough talking. Let's see what Salient OS is all about. Right, so you should see the, the Salient desktop in front of you. I've just booted the live CD, and as you can see, it's quite striking. A very dark wallpaper with a picture of a, a deer, reindeer, whatever. And uh, the installer launches straight away. And I'm pleased to see it's already set for British English. So let's just move on. It's got my time zone correct. Uh, English UK is already set as the default keyboard. And we're going to go for a raised disc. Uh, let's go for no swap. Given that this is just a virtual machine. And I'm just booting this in uh, standard MBR mode rather than uh, UEFI. So we'll put in our name and our password. What I will do is I'll pause this once uh, we get to a point where you've seen it all before. So use the same password for the admin account. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to take you to this point. So installs only the latest Linux kernel or Linux LTS kernel. Um, I actually like the LTS kernel, so I'm going to use that. NVIDIA, we don't need NVIDIA. Uh, the CUDA, CUDA toolkit, support for DaVinci Resolve and Blender. Not quite sure what that means, but uh, I don't use either. But if you need it, there it is. Intel Unicode, AMD Unicode. Well, I'm on VirtualBox, so I don't need to worry too much about that. And audio applications. Uh, let's just install P Pulse Mixer. I see pipe wire is an option there already. Uh, you can install Jack here if you wish. Development applications. I'm just whizzing through this really quite quickly just to see what we've got. Um, I like Genie, so I'll install that. Device support. Xbox Drive or Solar. Some of you may like that. Graphical applications. So you can have Blender, Darktable. Uh, let's have Darktable. Uh, Inkscape, why not? The GIMP, always my fallback. Internet applications. So what have we got here? Um, well, let's have Firefox. Um, and let's also install Chromium. Office applications. Yeah, so let's go for the LibreOffice Fresh. System applications. It's interesting. So it even includes BleachBit, um, CPU power. So if you've got a laptop, probably a good thing. GUFW. Yeah, let's have a, a graphical firewall. Uh, to help us out there. Deconf editor, why not? And Ventoy bin, so it isn't even as Ventoy on this. Terminals, we'll have alacrity. Video applications, well, let's have a look. It's quite hard to see the sidebar here because uh, um, 
Well, it is. It's it's a dark theme. G U V C view. Well, I haven't got a um, any sort of a webcam on this. Handbrake, Caden Live. Let's go for OBS Studio. And let's go for Shotcut. That are my two uh, favourite. VLC and Simple Screen Recorder. And do we want Virtual Box? We don't need Virtual Box at this stage. Nice to have a little bit of customization here. And I think it's quite sensible. It doesn't kind of drown you with options. So let's hit Next. It's telling me what it's going to do. It's going to create basically an EXT4 partition for the full 32 gig virtual drive. I'm going to click install, install now, and we'll come back once this is finished. Right, so that didn't take long at all. We're all done. Uh, so I'm going to reboot now and we'll come back and have a look at the install system. Okay, so uh, I shut the system down. The ISO hadn't automatically been removed, and uh, just just because I found this quite often, I tend not to do an automatic restart. I'll always shut down, remove the ISO if it's still there, and reboot. But anyway, it, it's rebooted fine. Um, and I have to say that I, I quite like this. You obviously need to be a real fan of dark themes for this, because it's very dark. Uh, we we have a panel up here, or I presume it's a panel up here, or part of a panel, uh, with your system tray. I don't know why I'm having uh, issues with this at the moment, but uh, with the virtual box menu coming up, but hey-ho, I've shifted it to the top, so it's uh, not so much in the way. We've got the whisker menu there. We've got another panel down here, uh, which is giving us access to Steam, Lutris, Okay, desktop, desktop background, menu and icon behavior. Let's see what that brings up. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> hold on now. We have got quite a few uh, wallpapers here. We certainly have. And uh, you can tell it's built for gaming because it's very much those sort of themed wallpapers. Let me just have a look here and see what, what I perhaps fancy. Um, let's go for this one. Oh, I like that. That's quite nice. And and just when you've got a dark theme anyway, I think, I think you need a slightly lighter wallpaper. If it's all dark, it can be too much. So I'm just going to leave that there. But okay, so we've got a nice looking de desktop. Um, the thing that always strikes me about XFCE is... In its vanilla form, it's the most uninspiring desktop you've ever seen. But with just a few tweaks, you can turn it into something really special. I quite like the way that this is themed just with a, a panel at the bottom, which is great. Your standard menu up there, your whisker menu, and let's just have a quick look what's here. So you've got the terminal, you've got the file manager, uh, file manager, I'm assuming is going to be Thunar, which it is. And uh, I quite like the blue icons. I've got no problem with the look and feel of this so far. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got our accessories, including Cavantum uh, Theme Manager. We've got Nitrogen in there. Um, although... XFCE in its basic form isn't going to use nitrogen, but if you want to install a window manager, really good. Notepad QQ, you've got PyCon. I don't know what Piper is, to be honest, does it tell me? Uh, I don't know. Let's just launch it and see. Uh-oh, something went wrong. Please make sure your device is supported and plugged in. As I don't know what it is, I'm not going to comment on that. Um... Let's have a look. So what else have we got here? A sensor viewer, task manager, Vim, and Wine Tricks installed from the get-go. On development, we've got Genie. I obviously asked for that to be installed. And Notepad QQ is there anyway. So this is a Linux um, text editor, which is pretty similar to Notepad++ for those guys who uh, are used to the window side. Come on, get out of the way. 
that's it it's gone again right um education we've got libra office math games so we've got game hub lutris steam in its native and runtime format now i'm not a gamer i'm really not and i'm clueless when it comes to games so all i'm going to do is say that this is a distro that is optimized for multimedia and gaming so if you're looking at doing gaming on linux this really is not a bad thing to start off with um so all your gaming stuff's there graphics we've got dark table and the gimp and inkscape all of which i opted to install multimedia we've got chromium and firefox sorry internet chromium and firefox multimedia we've got obs studio installed out of the box and shotcut and vlc and a simple screen recorder so it's clearly done everything we asked it to do in the installer and you can't really say much else we've got libra office base there that's the fresh version and then of course we've got all of our settings here so we'll have a look at settings in a minute including GUFW. So let's just launch that. And uh, it should bring up the graphical firewall. At the moment, it's not running, but I can turn it on. Simple as that. And there we are. On its default, deny everything coming in, allow everything going out, set up. Um, what else have we got here? Anything interesting? Da, 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 da. Um, standard stuff really and then of course in our system uh -huh, we've got alacrity and add remove software so what's add remove software right okay so this appears to be per mac it is indeed um just out of interest let's just see if uh the aur is installed by default so let me have a look advanced third party enable EUR, AUR support okay so it isn't enabled by default but it's really not a problem let's just see if yay is there and yay is indeed installed so that's quite nice to start off with i'm not going to go into great detail on this um it's arch you all know that uh, arch is my preferred distro so this is just another easy to install variant of arch i'm just looking at the settings here and i want to look at appearance and you've got a fair old number of styles there. So the Nordic darker standard buttons we have installed. But you can have Arc, Arc Dark, Arc Darker. And these are Qgar Dark, Qgar Manjaro Wind Dark. Let's just uh, see if we can open up a file manager and have a look and see what this does. So if we went for Arc Dark which is the one that I normally go for. Okay. Breeze Dark. Does that even work with GTK? Doesn't... Oh, yes, it does. It does. It's a little bit dark for me. We've had a look at the Nordic Darker. We'll move back to that. Uh, Quo Gear. Okay. Quo Gear Manjaro. Quo Gear Manjaro Dark. Quo Gear Ubuntu. Ubuntu Dark. You get the idea. There's plenty there. I'm just going to set it back to uh, Nordic Darker. What about the icons? Uh, anything specific here? Not as many. It's mainly papyrus icons, but easy enough to add. And the font set is Deja Vu Sans, which is absolutely fine so let's go back to all settings again uh your standard stuff here obviously you've got your Cavantum theme manager you've got your panel your panel profiles your display 
it went straight to uh, full HD 1920 by 1080 so no issue there you've got your keyboard there and obviously you can set all your shortcuts in that let's go back to all settings add and remove software obviously takes us to a Mac again session and start up and the login window okay so it's XFCE it's nicely themed it has a lot of nice wallpaper here I, I will say that um, in fact let's uh, let's see if we can go to appearance again actually it's not there is it where do I set the wallpaper in XFCE I can't remember it's I'm sure it used to be on the right click maybe it's me so really like some of these wallpapers that's quite striking okay or the chickens <laughs> or your very traditional arch type wallpaper you get the idea there's lots to play with here there really is so guys that salient it looks to me like uh it's a, another easy installable arch system. It comes with it, its own theme, but to be honest, you can change the theme to, to look like whatever you want. It allows you a choice of packages to install at the installation stage. And perhaps most importantly, for the gamers out there, all your gaming apps, you know, Te uh, Lutris and Steam are already installed, and I believe they're configured. So, yeah, it's an option. Let's have a chat. Right, so that's Salient OS. I mean, a very brief look today, um, but first impressions are really good. I know I didn't do a H-top uh, on the video, but, but I did do one after I hit the stop recording button. I know, it was too late. But it was showing about 480 megs, which for XFCE is fine. Um, it's a pretty lightweight distro. And if you're using XFCE, that, that's around the level that you'd expect. Now, I liked quite a few things about it. I did like the dark theme, but that's me. You know, I'm, I like dark themes generally. I like the Calamaris install where you've got options and you can choose the software that you want. A sensible range of options, though. You're not overloaded with choices. Just enough, in my opinion. And uh, I generally like the theming. I suppose on the downside, you could say, well, hold on. This is a one-man distro, Steve. You know, should we really be looking at one-man distros? How robust are they going to be for the future? And... I generally agree with you that I'm always a little bit wary about one-man distros. Um, but at the end of the day, it's an arch base. So, so it's an arch-based distro with theming and configurations thrown in that at the end of the day, you can all change. Um, and although it's targeted for multimedia and uh, gaming enthusiasts, at the end of the day, it's arch. So you can change it as you want to. I think it's a little gem. Um, I'm going to put it on my uh, T. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I might put it on my tiny little X131E and see how it does on that. It's likely to get the most use there because I, I've often got that in front of me uh, when I'm watching TV at night and I'm just trying to check emails or or use a web browser. So I, I will come back to it after I've used it in anger. But that's it for today, guys. Um, I'd like to say thanks, everybody, for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I must do another live stream soon as well, because I really enjoyed that. Uh, you, you, you sort of need a hook to hang those on, but I'll, I'll be giving that some thought uh, in the next week or two. Thanks, everybody. And if you'd like to come and join me on the Facebook group, do please. If you'd like to watch this on library again or Odyssey, please do. Although we all know that the future of that platform is up in the air at the moment. I've no idea what's going to happen to it. Um, what I would like to say, I'm just going over to my Patreons now as normal. 
Uh, thanks to the patrons for supporting me, guys. It's been a real help. And that's Robert, Gary, Aristoteles, Stormpick, Stephen, Mike, David, Richard, Ty, Forrest, Patrick, Glenn, uh, Magnus, Skipper, John M and David. Thank you so much for your support. Guys, it's quite a short one today, so that's it for this week, and uh, I'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>